folks, welcome back to Nostalgianomics. Today we're going to jump into the world of graded cards. Talk about why should you grade your cards? What's the point of it? Which cards should I grade if I do decide to grade them? Which cards should I just buy already graded if I want them for my collection? Or which ones should I take the chances on? And what are my chances of certain cards and how do I know? We're going to jump into all that because I feel like a really divisive topic in the hobby these days. You have people that are very pro-grading, very against grading. You have people in between. Uh, you got a lot of the flippers and sellers who just hate the plastic, right? The, the only reason they do it is so they can flip it on the market as fast as possible, but they don't actually want to hold any or invest in any themselves. Then you have others who truly believe in investing in it because of the rarity, the scarcity, and uh, maybe the significance of the hobby, whatever it may be. And uh, so we're going to kind of just cover every basis in this video because I think it does need to be talked about and I don't really see it dove into very deeply enough. So before we get into that, I do have to give a quick shout out to lowpopping.market. The Charizard giveaway is coming up. It will be at the end of the month on Halloween. This is a PSA 10 Evolutions Reverse Hollow Charizard. Very hard to get PSA 10s and Evolutions, by the way, especially with these Charizards. So all you have to do to be in this giveaway is... All you need to do to be included in the giveaway is go to Nostalgianomics YouTube channel, leave your favorite Pokemon in the comment section of the top 15 alternate art cards in Sword and Shield plus huge giveaway video seen right here. From there, just make sure to follow Low Popping on all of their socials. One, check out lowpopping.market on Instagram where you can also buy, sell, and trade with them there. Make sure to subscribe to their YouTube channel. And last, make sure to go join their Discord server where you can also buy, sell, and trade there as well as participate in other Pokemon and other collectible market discussions. Here is also the giveaway featured here in the Discord. As long as you do all of those steps, you are in the giveaway and you can win the Charizard. The links to all of that will be in the description below. All right, jumping into why you should grade your cards. Now look, a lot of people are really against grading. They don't like the whole process. They don't like how arbitrary it is with one human or a group of humans all putting a value on your card where you know it could be subjective to what other people think. And so they're just out on the whole process and they keep all their cards raw. The reason people grade their cards is one, how are you going to keep them raw? Are you going to put them in a binder? where you can't ever see them, you can't display them, and then you got to get out your binder and flip through the pages every time you want to see them. Also, depending on the binder, depending on where they're stored, they could get damaged. A lot of people, the binder's out for them. Next, do you keep it in a top loader, right? You can put them in a top loader, keep them protected, you can display them on a shelf. However, one, top loader's tops, are they're open. So, you know, moisture, anything can still get in there. Also, if they get banged around, you carry them anywhere, guess what? They can fly right out on you, so... Top loader's out for long term. Um, now you can say, I'm just going to keep them in the semi-rigid. Because, hey, semi-rigid, it's not going to it's not gonna have your cards fall out on you. You can display it great on a shelf, just like a you know top loader, just like a slab. But, you know, the top is still open. And these things are a little flimsy if you are going to be transporting them around. So, you know, I'm not saying they can get damaged, but, you know, things can happen. So those are some reasons people get slabs. But the majority of the reason is it gives a third party assigned number grade, assigned grade on the card. The reason sites like TCG Player and the reason a lot of the raw sales on eBay have a lot of issues with people being unhappy or condition issues and things like that or returns is because it's hard for people to agree on a condition. One person might see it and say, oh yeah, that's near mint, that's an eight or a nine. Another person might say, maybe it's near mint, it's like a seven, maybe. Other people might say, no, that's light play, that's like a seven, six, maybe. I, I, I would still add as light play. And so you have all these people disagree, and also, then you try to check a recent sold, if you're trying to sell the card or you're trying to trade the card, it's very hard to assign a value because you know, it's based on what other cards in that same category of condition went for, but they don't really look exactly the same because you can have a near mint selling TCG player, it's a seven quality, and then another one sell it to 10 quality, and they sell for the same exact price, right? Same on eBay. You could have, you know, ones with terrible pictures, ones with good pictures, ones who have, you know, bad titles or descriptions where they actually lie on them and say they're near mint, but they're not. So it's very hard to assign a value when you do go to sell or do go to trade. Whereas when you have it slabbed, really easy. You just look up, you know, PSA 10, whatever card it is, and you can find a market price, what it's selling for, what they're listed for, and uh, it's all agreed upon, and that's the condition of that card. And so that's really the main reason why a lot of people like to encapsulate their cards. It makes the transactions easier, and obviously it just makes it easier to store, display, carry, don't worry about getting damaged, all those things. So from there, let's jump into 
what card should you not grade? People think you should grade every card. No, you shouldn't. And I know a lot of the flippers and a lot of, you know, people that do resell in this industry don't even like slabs. Like they don't even want to hold any slabs. They don't invest in them. Their sole purpose for their, for their mindset is I put the cards in plastic. I get them in. I sell them as fast as possible. I make the margin. I don't want to hold any of these things. I don't believe in them. Whereas other people truly love them. Like they love collecting them. They believe in the long-term investment potential of them. And, uh, you know, they will just buy the slabs off the market because they don't want to go through the process of trying to source near mint cards, right? You, you look at the pictures on eBay, maybe you try to find them on TCG player. You try to find them on other sites, you make trades, you get them in. And then some of the singles aren't even really grade quality, grade worthy. So you got to flip those back on the market, do all that work, probably eat the shipping and fees, lose money. Um, so you got to send in, you know, make your order, send them into PSA or any other grading company. That takes time, right? It costs money. You got to pay $15 a card plus shipping there and shipping back, which depending on the order size, it could end up being like 16 to $17 a card. And then you finally get them back, you know, months later, some got the grades you wanted, some didn't, the ones that didn't, you got to sell off and rinse and repeat that whole process. And it becomes really cumbersome, right? To collectors and to people who don't do this full time. And um, so people who do this full time, it doesn't make sense to them to ever buy a slab. But to me, I've done both. And so I understand people wanting to just buy the card and not deal with all of that nonsense. And so here's, here's a real easy example. If you want this EVV Max, right, this this uh, uh, Shining Fates ETB promo in your collection at a PSA 10, why would you grade it? You can find this card between $20 and $30 on the market. You got to buy it raw, which is whatever, one, two, three dollars okay? You got to send it in, which is $15, $16, $17, and then hope it gets a 10, right? Hope you got a card in that's gradable. Hope the grader did not give it a 10. Get it, and then wait months to get it back and then finally get that card for your collection when you can buy it for almost the same price, maybe the same price at auction if you find a good auction, maybe a little more at auction right now. So that's, that's, this is a, just a, one example of a card that might make sense. Now, everyone's got different thresholds. Like I said, some people never buy slabs. Some people only buy slabs. Some people have thresholds where they say, well, anything over 30, 40, or $50, then I maybe try to grade myself. Anything under that, I'll just buy for my collection because I don't want to waste the time or energy and, and worry about grading those. So it just depends. It's different for every individual. You have to make that decision for yourself. Now, let's get into some more you know, nuance with the grading scales. This Charizard Reshiram Gold card, it came in the Charizard Reshiram Gold box. This graded a PSA 10. So I, I, on face value, this makes sense, right? You can find this card for six to $10 near mint raw. This goes for almost $100 in a PSA 10. So you're thinking, Alex, that's a 10X on my money. Of course I'm grading those. Hold up, hold up. If you use sites like TCG Fish, okay? You can actually look up how hard these cards are to grade and you can go in and it'll show you the exact percentage of people getting a 10 over a nine. So you know the 10 rate. Now, some cards have a very low 10 rate, like 10 or 20%. They're very hard to grade. So you might go through five, 10, 20 cards to eventually get that 10 you want where it doesn't make sense in the end because you maybe broke even or lost money or took tons of time on the rest of the cards. So. This card, I think it's somewhere in the middle. I'm not sure. Um, it might still make sense to grade this, but just be careful. Make sure when you see those huge margins that you actually look at how hard it is to find those cards. One of those cards being this Jolteon. So this is a Jolteon from a Battle Styles three-pack blister. These cards, you can find them for pennies. I found these cards for, I believe I paid 80 cents a piece for 20 of them. Now, I got 20 of them in maybe a handful of them were gradable and I only ended up getting like two tens out of those, which is very, so it's very hard to get these tens. Now, when you get the 10, I believe I'm selling these for like 50 or $60. It makes a lot of sense. However, going through that whole process, you know, hoping to get a 10, spend all that money on grading. If you want it for your collection, sometimes it might make sense to still buy it, even though the margins are great, just because the effort, the work, the risk you're taking might not make sense. Now, guys, obviously there are other cars that make just astronomical sense where it's like 10x plus where they have a 70 percent 10 rate one comes to mind i'm thinking of i actually ran out of them i was gonna show one but i ran out of all of them because they all sold was the uh the stained glass birds right the hidden fates sm210 zapdos multrasar crudo promos 
those have like an astronomically high 10 rate. They usually always come very, you know, very perfect, easy to get tens. You can get them, you know, for 15 or $20 and then they sell for 60 or $70 in a 10. So something like that might just make sense to grade every time if you want it because it's just so easy to get the 10 and uh, the cards are cheap and it's easier to pay. So it really just depends on your situation, but those are the things to look for. So we went over the reasons why you grade. It's, it, it keeps them safe. It's easier to store than like a binder, a top loader, or a um, semi-rigid. It's easier to transport. You don't have to get them damaged, right? Um, and also it assigns a grade and a value from a third party. So that way you don't have to worry about trying to come up with values when you go to sell or trade down the road. All right. We went over what cards you should you shouldn't grade. So obviously if they're real cheap, if it almost makes sense that the cost is the same to even grading fees and raw card cost, it might make sense to just buy the slab. And then the ones not to grade are the ones that maybe are, you know, real hard to grade, 10, 20%, 10 rated, take a lot of risk, a lot of effort, a lot of work to actually find cards that are gradable. It still might make sense to buy. And then the ones that you should grade, obviously the high 10 rates. I, me, I'm like a casino, right? Casinos operate anything over 50%. So anything over 50% is in the house's favor. And so that's why all their games have at least a 50 point or 51% plus um, uh, win rate for the casino. That's kind of how I am. If a card has a 51 or, or higher percent of getting a 10 than a 9, um, I'm game. I, I, my odds are in my favor. If I send enough cards that I pre-grade, I'm going to get um, 10 more of the time. And so I'm okay with that. That's what I look for in the percentage wise. And so that's what you could do too. But it, it really just kind of gives you an idea of how to navigate the graded market. And, um, you know, another reason I wanted to make this is don't feel bad about buying slabs. A lot of people that sell in this community want to make people feel almost stupid to buy slabs. Like, why would you ever buy these things? You can grade them yourself. Well, it doesn't always make sense to grade yourself because unless you're doing large and large volume and quantities, um, it can just make sense to buy the 10 um, instead of go through all that trouble. Um, and then the vice versa, it can also sometimes make sense to just grade the card when the 10 is so easy to get. So hope you enjoyed the video. Again, make sure to go follow Low Pop and all their socials and comment on that video, your favorite Pokemon to win the Charizard. Other than that, my name is Alex. This is Nostalgia Nomics, and I'll be back here in a new video soon. I'm out.